Good evening, you're watching ITV One. Now it's time for Sunday's ITV Weekend News with John Suchet. We won't cave in. The BBC hits back at Blair. The board is satisfied that it was in the public interest to broadcast Mr Gilligan's story. Archbishop's anger as gay priest steps down. And tears of a champion, Federer takes the title. The ITV Weekend News with John Suchet. Good evening. The BBC tonight hit back at the government in the row over the Iraq weapons dossier. The Board of Governors, summoned to a rare crisis meeting today, emphatically rejected Downing Street allegations that BBC coverage was biased and called for those claims to be withdrawn. It follows a furious attack on the BBC by the Prime Minister. Our political editor, Nick Robinson, is at Broadcasting House now. Nick. Not since the days of Thatcher and Tebbit have we seen a bare-knuckled fight between the BBC and the government quite like this one. The question tonight was how the BBC governors would react to that demand for an apology. And their reaction was an extraordinary one. They said, in effect, you should be apologising to us. It's do or die, stand up to the government or destroy the BBC's independence. That was Greg Dyke's unequivocal message tonight to this man, the BBC's chairman, and to the Board of Governors. And clearly, they were listening. It emphatically rejects Mr Campbell's claim that large parts of the BBC had an agenda against the war. We call on Mr Campbell to withdraw these allegations of bias against the BBC and its journalists. At issue, this claim broadcast on Radio 4 based on a conversation with a single anonymous official about the famous infamous maybe 45 minute warning I have been told is that the government knew that claim was questionable even before the war even before they wrote it in their dossier we consider that it was entirely proper to reflect some unease about the presentation of the government's arguments in the disputed dossier the board is satisfied that it was in the public interest to broadcast Mr Gilligan's story. What infuriated the men at number 10 is that that report was followed up in paper after paper, despite their insistence that it simply wasn't true. In an interview in this morning's Observer, the Prime Minister declares that, I take it as about as serious an attack on my integrity as there could possibly be, and the charge is untrue, and I hope they will accept that. If the government is vindicated, as I believe it will be by the Foreign Affairs Committee tomorrow, I hope the BBC will simply apologise, because otherwise it's going to do the BBC serious long-term damage. This is the committee which ministers are pinning their hopes on. They've split on party lines. So Alastair Campbell will be cleared on this charge, but only by Labour MPs. The Prime Minister really needs to take heed. If he wants to clear this situation up and show absolutely what happened, then he should have that independent judicial inquiry. When Greg Dyke took over at the BBC, he was attacked for being a Labour Party member and Blair crony. Who would have thought it would end like this? If you thought the government's anger was synthetic, that it was a smokescreen, think again. I've just been speaking to Alastair Campbell and he insists that a once great institution, the BBC, has broadcast a lie and will never, ever, ever admit that it's wrong. And he's not going to leave it here. Thank you, Nick. The father of a young British journalist killed in Iraq today described how his family had begged him not to go. 24-year-old freelancer Richard Wilde travelled to Baghdad to pursue his dream of becoming a war correspondent. He was shot dead outside the city's museum. His former headmaster paid this tribute. He was uh, among the, the best boys of his generation. Uh, he was very much a man for others. and uh, he, he was looking for, for causes. He was an idealist. He was a man of so many talents, he could have done anything. The Archbishop of Canterbury today condemned what he called a shocking level of ignorance and hatred towards homosexuals. He was speaking after Geoffrey John, the first openly gay clergyman to be appointed a bishop, withdrew from the post. His appointment had outraged Conservatives in the Church of England. Here's Simon Harris. This is a crisis which threatened a worldwide split in the Anglican Church. 
The Archbishop of Canterbury said Canon John's resignation was an open and painful confrontation. He called on both sides to pause for thought and then launched an extraordinary attack on what he called foolish and hurtful prejudice. Let me add that some of the opposition expressed to Canon John's appointment has been very unsavoury indeed. A number of the letters I received displayed a shocking level of ignorance and hatred toward homosexual people. Canon Geoffrey John, who works at Southwark Cathedral in London, said he was withdrawing from his new post as Bishop of Reading in view of the damage my consecration might cause to the church, including the Anglican Communion. His supporters say he's been forced out. In Southwark, the Dean abandoned his sermon to protest from the pulpit. He has become a victim of appalling prejudice and abuse, which has its main proponents within the Church of England. There may be fury here, but evangelical campaigners are delighted. The whole tenor of, uh, Anglican, of the Anglican Communion is against, really, same-sex relationships coming into uh, church life and Christian life. It's not really part of it. Canon Geoffrey John's resignation may help prevent a damaging split in the church, but it could be short-lived. It has only underlined how deep the divisions are, and this is a row which will not go away. Simon Harris, ITV News, Lambeth Palace. Police in Humberside have launched a murder inquiry into the death of a skydiver whose parachute was sabotaged. Stephen Hilder plunged 13,000 feet after someone severed both his main and reserve parachutes. Detectives said the murder motive was a mystery and it might have been a random act of vandalism. Richard Slee reports. It was over this airfield in Lincolnshire that Stephen Hilder plunged 13,000 feet to his death. Tests have now revealed that the lines on both his main and reserve parachutes had been cut. This was a deliberate act on the part of some person. Uh, we need to establish who cut the, the strapping and why they did it. And we obviously can't rule out the possibility that this is a murder investigation. The 20-year-old officer cadet was a veteran of more than 200 jumps. Like these skydivers in Kent, he would have packed his own parachute. It's a complex operation and only experienced skydivers know how to do it. Instructor Pete Sizer told me it would be especially difficult to get at the reserve chute. All parts of the reserve are tucked away inside this container. The only part that's exposed at all are the two straps here which connect the lines of the reserve parachute to the harness that we're in. It's one continuous piece. It would be pretty hard to damage a reserve parachute inside a container. Safety checks are the most important part of a jump, but there's no way to guard against a deliberate act of sabotage. Richard Slee, ITV News. There's optimism in Northern Ireland after the parade that's been a violent symbol of division passed off without trouble. There had been fears of more fighting at the annual Orange Order Parade in Drum Cree, but today's peaceful march has prompted hopes that a permanent solution to the dispute can be found. It was pure passion on centre court at Wimbledon today as the new men's champion sank to his knees and burst into tears. Roger Federer became the first Swiss player to win the men's trophy and he did it in a style which brought the crowd to its feet. Romilly Weeks was there. Today was Roger Federer's first Wimbledon final, his first Grand Slam win. Nobody thinks for a second that it will be his last. He's always been tipped as a future champion and today he showed why. Roger Federer had made centre court his own during the fortnight. Philippoussis, a formidable player, was using his serve to deadly effect. But his opponent could match ace with ace. Tiebreak in the first set, and Federer was showing why he's considered to have the most beautiful shots in the game. The crowd could hardly believe what they were seeing. When Federer found a way to disarm the Australian serve, Philippoussis' father looked as though he could sense the game was up. There was a spark of recovery from Philippoussis, the tension getting to the Swiss camp, but Federer never lost his cool, served his way to victory and to a place in history as Switzerland's first ever men's champion. There's a lot of... Uh positive things to take away from these two weeks but uh, I'll, I'll say one thing I'll definitely be back that's for sure I was always joking around when I was a boy 
I'm going to win this. And <laughs> now I have it. Yes, he does. And in Roger Federer, Wimbledon has a new champion, while Switzerland has a new star. Romilly Weeks, ITV News at Wimbledon. And that's it for now. You can hear the full statement by the BBC Board of Governors on the ITV News Channel from the weekend team here on ITV1. Good night. ITV National Weather, sponsored by PowerGen. PowerGen. Power in good hands. Hello, good evening. Well, it's a bit of a changeable week ahead of us. Certainly rain at times for everybody. But then come round about midweek, some really warm weather around, at least for England and Wales. Now, on to our brand new week tomorrow, Monday morning for Scotland and Northern Ireland, getting off to a grey, wet old start. But further south, England and Wales, a mixture of cloud and some fairly good sunny spells as well. And then what happens during the course of the day is the cloud, the rain, slides southeastwards all the while, getting into Yorkshire and possibly a few spots of rain as far south as mid Wales, but at least brighter weather tucking in behind there. With our temperatures, this is the sort of thing we can expect tomorrow. Places like Belfast, the 20 mark, Cardiff 22, London heading the list with 23 degrees. Good night. Power Gen. Power in good hands.